What's going on guys? Today, the three-year update on fluid film on this 2017 Colorado and the start of the test between wool wax and fluid film on my own personal truck. All right, so real quick this year, before I uh, spray anything, this is what the, uh, the truck looks like. As you can see, maybe a hint of rust starting on the rocker, but Re realistically, because all the, the water spray that that's getting, um, that's it's just a couple little dots of rust, not hardly anything at all. Um, emergency brake cables starting to show a little bit, but you know that's that's kind of in the line of fire from the the front tire. A little bit on the uh, leaf spring there. A little bit on the backing plate. But for the most part, um, all this stuff really looks pretty much the same as what it did last year. I had a couple guys wanting to show like brake lines, fuel lines, that sort of thing. Um, and there is a little bit on some of the fittings for the brake lines, but it simply has to do with the amount of water in this area back here. Because if you look at the one further up there on the frame, it's not nearly as in rough a shape as what this one is. So it's it's definitely getting washed off to some degree, but I'm gonna tell you guys right now, you're far better off using this than what you, what you are not, because uh, quite frankly, after three years going into the fourth year, like I said in previous videos, this is about as good as it gets in uh, the snow belt in Northeastern Ohio. So yeah, I mean, obviously pretty uneventful. Again, because of the water contact, there's a little bit on that brake hose, that upper end of the brake hose and on the caliper, but. Um, I, had, I had somebody last year basically troll me and say I wasn't showing the exhaust. Um, so here's the exhaust. You can't you can't coat the exhaust on anything because this is a diesel, and when this when this DPF goes into regen, it gets super super hot. So if you look here, there's a fuel injector in the exhaust that sprays fuel actually into the exhaust. And if you notice, that is where all the rust starts because that is where all the heat is. So if you come up here before the fuel injector, oh wow, it looks like new. So. I had a bunch of guys saying, oh, you should try like peanut oil or, you know, some stupid concoction of paint or whatever. And this thing gets between 1400, I would say between 12 and 1600 degrees. And there's no paint on the planet that's gonna hold up to that. I'm sorry, but not, not with the heat cycles that this exhaust is gonna go through. It's just not gonna happen. And any coating you put on here is gonna get burned off. Um, and realistically, this, this exhaust is going to last pretty much the life of the truck. Um, you'll wear out other stuff before this, this exhaust becomes a, an actual problem. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing sprayed for this year. And uh, we'll roll my truck into the bay and... Uh, go over that one as well. Um, that one, I'll show you guys, I'm gonna do a comparison test between fluid film and wool wax, but uh, there's a reason why you don't wanna use wool wax in certain places. So this is what the truck looks like going into uh, winter number four. Um, you know, same deal as pretty much every other year. Looks pretty much the same, it's just glossier now. So. No real big changes. A uh, couple little pieces of extra rust, but realistically, for going into its fourth winter, um, it looks excellent. By this time, I had an F-150 that I had holes, well, I should say, I had rust bubbles in the, in the front bumper after three years that Ford wouldn't warranty, by the way. Um, so yeah, to say this thing looks good is an understatement.
So every year I kind of get people asking me if I've seen any, you know, detrimental effects on any rubber from spraying this this fluid film on here. And really, this is the only thing that I've noticed is this weather stripping is starting to get swelled up. And again, this is after three years. And the other thing is when I spray, I spray the bottom edge of the doors down here. So when this door is closed, the fluid film is in contact with the weather stripping the entire time that the door shut. So this is kind of a worst case scenario for weather stripping, but as you guys can see, it's a little swollen. Um, it's not too terribly bad. It's not like it's sagging off the car or anything, but um, you know, kind of stop and think about something. Even if I had to replace this weather stripping every three years, it's still a heck of a lot cheaper than having to, uh, you know, replace your rockers or putting new bedsides in the truck or anything like that. Because realistically, this weather stripping is probably between, let's say, fifty and ninety dollars for each side. So for less than two hundred bucks, how much how much rust can you fix for less than two hundred bucks? Probably not very much. All right, so the truck I'm standing underneath now is my own. Um, I'll show you guys here in a second. You know, I'll take you guys around and show you, uh, you know, kind of what it looks like. But realistically, it really doesn't look any different than what it did last year. All right, so as far as the comparison test, um, I told you guys last year, I had a company reach out to me and want me to compare um, the fluid film that I'm using to their product. Um, the company that actually reached out to me was uh, New Hampshire Oil Spray. Um, super nice people over there. I spoke with Joe, the owner, and fantastic dude. I had a, probably a 45 minute conversation with him about, um, you know, obviously fluid film, his product, other stuff that's on the market, you know, what's good, what's bad. And I'm here to tell you guys, um, my results that I got from my testing sort of correlate with uh, what he told me. So, um, what can I say? My, my results from you know my, my multiple year tests that I've done on these different undercoatings, they're valid results even to people in the undercoating industry. So with that said, he offered to send me um, you know free product. He goes, hey, I'm more than willing to send you uh, some of my product. You can you know spray one half of your car with my product, the other half of food film and then uh, you know, review the results after a year and see you know, what did better. But you guys kind of have to put yourself in my shoes for a second and just think about something. So if somebody sends you a product for free, so if Joe sent me a gallon of his product for free and I had to pay for fluid film, how can I go against Joe and New Hampshire oil spray when I got it for free and I had to pay for the fluid film. How can I throw that company under the bus and basically be honest with you guys? How can I be honest when I got something for free? So I kind of took a step back and I said, you know, I, I really can't go forward about doing this because it's it's not a fair test when you're getting something for free and you're paying for another one. So with that in mind, what I'm gonna compare is I have, I bought five gallons of wool wax and I bought five gallons of fluid film. I'm gonna basically um, take a section of my truck that you know doesn't have any you know, electrical components or um, anything, anything that isn't gonna be affected by a pressure washer and I'm gonna pressure wash off this fluid film that I have on here and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So we're gonna start with, you know, as bare of metal as I can get. Obviously, there's still gonna be fluid film inside the frame on this thing, but as far as any exposed areas, um, I'm gonna blow off all the coating with a pressure washer, and I'm gonna start fresh with wool wax and fluid film. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back next year for you guys and basically show you guys what did better. Um, but just from my experience and my testing, um, I'm gonna tell you guys right now that the wool wax is gonna hold up better than the fluid film in the exposed areas. It just is, I, I know this, because I've tested 30 different products and I know how they perform, I know what works, I know what doesn't. 
There's a big downside to wool wax, and that is the thickness of the product. The product is actually so thick that if you spray it like inside a rocker panel or inside the frame or anything like that, it will not penetrate the pinch welds. So instead of it getting in between the two pieces of metal and getting down inside and protecting it, what'll happen is it'll actually just sit on top of those two pieces of metal and you'll have rust form in between, let's say the pinch welds on your rocker panels because the, the product is so thick, it won't actually go down into the pinch welds between the two pieces of metal. Um, if you think I'm wrong and you think that's not true, wool wax actually went to the time and effort to develop a low viscosity coating. So they have a LV version of wool wax. So if what I'm saying isn't true, why would the company go through and develop a low viscosity version of wool wax? They wouldn't. So I'm gonna go get my pressure washer and uh, I'll show you guys the areas that I'm gonna do, but like I told you, it's not gonna be an area that, I'm not gonna do the whole thing because obviously, you know, I've got a bunch of exhaust after treatment system stuff on this diesel that I'm not trying to, you know, blow 2000 PSI worth of water at the wiring harnesses for all this stuff and create a bunch of electrical problems that I never had before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like the outsides of the frame and the rocker panels and stuff out here. And I'm also gonna do like the front of the axle, um, the areas that are exposed to a lot of uh, water contact. And that is the, those are the areas that, you know, fluid film really doesn't do all that well. So I wanna see, will wool wax hold up better in those areas? So yeah, I'll take you guys around and show you guys, you know, what everything looks like before I, you know, wash everything off. But uh, yeah, with that, I'll show you guys what it looks like. I'm gonna go get my pressure washer. I'm gonna pressure wash it. After I pressure wash it, I'm probably gonna let this thing sit like three or four days and just let all the water kind of evaporate off the surface so I'm not coating, you know, right over top of water. All right, so this is my truck. Uh, this is what it looks like, you know. This is going into its third winter. Um, I spray this thing twice a year, spring and fall. And as I go around here, you guys can, you know, kind of start to see that, you know, there is a bit of a benefit spraying it twice a year. Um, but I'm just going to, I wanted to say something real quick as far as frequently asked questions that I get. And I'm going to kind of use this opportunity to address some of that stuff. Uh, first of which, I have a lot of people asking me, how often do I wash the vehicle? Um, not to be a jerk and not to be condescending, but I wash it when it's dirty. Um, I really don't wash the undercarriage at all. I will hose rinse the wheel wells, but as far as the undercarriage, I have literally never washed it. Right here, taking a look at the front of the axle. Um, if you guys remember back to last year, I sprayed the front of this axle on the driver's side with LPS3. The uh, passenger side got fluid film, and as you guys can see, I really don't see much of a difference as far as one compared to the other, but that's for you guys to decide. Um, the other question that I get a lot is, uh, why am I not using like uh, Cosmoline or something like that? Um, the thing is with Cosmoline, you guys have to take a look at the environment that I'm spraying this in. Uh, you know, obviously I don't want my floor, my walls, my lift, my bench, my toolbox, all that stuff coated in orange goo that I can't remove. Because if you guys remember back to uh, my yearly testing that I've done, I can't even remove Cosmoline with a pressure washer. So with that in mind, that's why I'm sticking with fluid film. Um, I'm sure, you know, for you guys that are spraying outside or spraying on jacks and jack stands outside, not a big deal, but I have a lift and I'm going to use it. Um, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense for me to crawl, crawl around on the ground when I can just put the car six feet in the air and walk around underneath it. Another uh, frequent question that I get a lot is, uh, you know, guys want to take their, let's say, five-year-old truck and wire wheel the bottom of it and paint it and then put the fluid film on. Um, personally, I would kind of suggest against it because what you're going to do is when you wire wheel off all the, the loose rust, which you guys should do, um, you can't guarantee that you're going to get all the moisture off the surface before you spray paint over the top of it. So if you spray paint over top of moisture, you're going to seal the moisture into the, into the metal just like you do with rubberized undercoating and it's gonna rust just as bad as when you started, if not worse. Um, my suggestion is this. 
If you're going to go through the time and effort to wire wheel the bottom of the car and try and clean things up, just remove all the loose rust scale and that sort of thing, and then spray fluid film or Wobax or New Hampshire oil spray, whatever you guys want to use, right over the top of that. Um, also, with that in mind, if you guys are doing it over existing rust, yes, I am aware fluid film has a black version. New Hampshire oil spray has a black version. Wobax also has a black version. But it is very, very, very messy. Um, the black version, when you go to wipe it up, it just kind of smears and it's blatantly obvious where you get the overspray because it's so dark. Um, really, realistically, the only difference between the clear version and the black version is they mix in graphite in with the coating. So you're spraying fluid film plus liquid graphite. That's the difference. So at this point, I'm sure some of you guys are saying, well, you could just heat up the wool wax and it'll creep just as well as a fluid film. No, it won't. Believe me, I've tried it. And using an inner cavity tool with wool wax um, isn't nearly as good as the inner cavity tool with fluid film as far as how the, the product atomizes because it's so thin. You get much better coverage with fluid film on an internal cavity than what you do with wool wax. Believe me, I've tried both of them and I've heated them both up in the same bucket of water and at the same temperature, fluid film, as far as being lower viscosity and being able to creep, fluid film blows wool wax out of the water. Um, realistically, for you guys, if you guys want one product turnkey that works and you don't have to you know, put one product on your inner cavities and another product on the outer portions of the vehicle just by fluid film um i think i've documented it just about as good as anybody on the internet at this point that you know quite frankly the stuff works all right so as far as my uh my comparison test between wool wax and fluid film this is how i'm going to go about doing it so if you look right here i have a cross member and in front of the cross member i have some wiring up here that um you know obviously i don't want to hit with the pressure washer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pressure wash the, the frame and the rocker panel from this cross member, probably back to the spring mount back here. So this whole section on both sides of the truck. So I'm gonna pressure wash all of this fluid film off, all of the dirt, all of the grime and get it back as close to um, bare metal as I can get it. You know, obviously I can't guarantee that I'm getting 100% of all the fluid film off of here to make this comparison test, but it's the best that I can do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow all this off with a pressure washer on both sides from the cross member back to the spring mount. And then one side is gonna get coated with wool wax. The other side is gonna get coated with fluid film. Um, the other place that I'm gonna hit is gonna be the front of the axle. Um, if you guys remember, the front of the axle has kind of been the one spot that I cannot get uh, fluid film to, to adhere to. It just simply gets blown off by all the water spray. So that's how I'm gonna go about doing my comparison test. Um, Obviously, I'm not trying to create a bunch of electrical issues with my truck by blowing, you know, pressurized, you know, 2000 PSI pressurized water at a bunch of wiring harnesses and a bunch of components underneath my truck. So that's how I'm going to go about doing it. Some of you guys may say that, uh, you know, it's not a true comparison test because you aren't doing the whole thing. Well, if, if you want to go underneath your truck with a 2000 PSI pressure washer and start, you know, blowing wiring harnesses up, feel free. I'm not gonna do it because I don't have any issues right now and I don't plan on creating any. All right, so after I got it pressure washed, you guys can see the front of the rockers 
nice and dirty. Back of it is still nice and clean. Hopefully I, uh, I'm not gonna drip water all over the place, but uh, there's a spot there I guess still gonna hit, but for the most part, Axel, I did the best job that I could. Again, this has kind of been my problem area. You can see some rust there, some rust there, a little bit there. But I mean, realistically for uh, going into its third winter, really not that bad at all. Um, so there's the, the clean rocker, the clean frame. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this thing drip dry for probably a few days and just, you know, try and get this thing somewhat dry before I spray it again. And then uh, I'll hit one half with wool wax, the other half with fluid film, come back in a year, see what it looks like. All right, so it's been a few days. Um, as you guys can see, you know, I, I got the, the front of this axle cleaned off pretty well. Um, but if you guys notice, I actually had to wipe down the front of the axle, you know, with a rag and like some brake clean to actually get all the residue off of here. So like if you look in, in between those U-bolts, um, there's still fluid film there. Um, I hit that with the pressure washer and as you guys can tell, it didn't completely come off. Um, even on this backing plate, I'm sure you guys can kind of see it. It kind of looks a little hazy, looks a little strange. Um, Again, there's still residue on that, so just for your own guys' knowledge, um, if you do try to pressure wash this stuff, it will come off to some degree, but uh, it's not gonna come off completely. So if you guys take a look here at the outside of the frame, um, there's still some residue on here. So as you guys can tell, you know, obviously the pressure washer didn't completely remove um, all the fluid film off the frame. So like I did with the front of the axle, I'm gonna wipe all this down with a rag, you know, try and get this as clean as possible. So, uh, you know, I have good, you know, somewhat freshly, you know, freshly bare painted metal or whatever you wanna call it to start with. So I'm not gonna be coating over top of, uh, you know, old fluid film. So I just finished up with uh, my truck for the year and basically this is what it looks like. Um, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm just repeating myself over and over, but it looks basically the exact same as what it did last year. Um, so as far as the wool wax versus fluid film, so the driver side of the axle, this has wool wax on it. The driver side of the frame up here this also has wool wax on it. The passenger side of the axle has fluid film on it. And as you can see, I laid the fluid film on there, quite frankly, stupidly thick. Um, I'm gonna try and give it as good a chance as possible as I can to uh, stay on the axle, but uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, realistically, you're not gonna spray more fluid film on anything than that because it, beyond that point, it's just gonna drip off and if it's dripping off the, the surface, it's not doing you any good. So the outside of the frame here, this got fluid film as well. So the passenger side got fluid film, driver side got wool wax, and uh, I'll see you guys in a year and uh, we'll see what all this stuff looks like. All right guys, that's what I have for this year. As far as the update, um, I'll bring you guys obviously back next year and uh, you know we'll go over 
how the test went and what everything looks like and that sort of stuff. But um, if any of you guys are interested in fluid film or wool wax, I'll have links in the description to uh, the liquid that I spray as well as the spray gun that I use, a cheaper version of the spray gun that I use, um, as well as aerosol cans. So if you don't have compressed air, you can just use aerosol cans and do it that way. Um, but yeah, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.